In the heart of the Pacific, scientists are sounding the alarm as five of the Philippines' most dangerous volcanoes awaken together, an event never captured in human history. Over two million lives now hang in the balance, with earthquake swarms and toxic gases signaling a threat on a scale no one thought possible. What could link these volcanic giants, and why is this happening now? The answers challenge everything we thought we knew, and the consequences could redefine the fate of a nation. Where three tectonic plates collide, the Philippines rises from the sea, a country born of fire, shaped by constant motion beneath its feet. The Eurasian plate pushes from the west, the Philippine Sea plate slides in from the east, and the Sunda plate presses upward from the south. At this triple junction, the crust is pulled, compressed, and fractured, creating a perfect engine for volcanic activity. Here, the Philippine Sea Plate dives under the archipelago at a rate of 7 to 8 centimeters each year, feeding magma into the crust and fueling a chain of volcanoes that stretches the length of the islands. 24 volcanoes remain active across this narrow landmass. Five of them, Taal, Mayon, Kanlaon, Bulusan, and Pinatubo, loom as the most dangerous. More than 2 million Filipinos live within the officially designated danger zones of these five systems alone. Their homes built on land both fertile and unpredictable. In Metro Manila, just 31 miles north of Taal, 24 million people live within reach of ashfall from a major eruption. Around Mayon, 70,000 residents live in the shadow of a near-perfect cone, the mountain slopes dotted with villages and rice fields. Across the Visayas, Canlan's restless summit towers over towns that depend on its rich volcanic soil. Every year, the slow collision of plates beneath the Philippines adds new pressure to these volcanic systems. The risk is not abstract. It is measured in the dense clusters of homes, schools, and markets built atop ancient lava fields and lahar channels. In this crowded archipelago, the line between daily life and disaster is drawn by the movement of the Earth itself. On a January morning in 1911, Taal Volcano unleashed a blast that tore through villages and fields with almost no warning. Ash and scalding mud buried entire communities around the lake. When the eruption ended, more than 1,300 people were dead. Farmers, fishermen, whole families erased in a matter of hours. The land, once lush and green, was transformed into a wasteland of steaming craters and blackened trees. A century earlier, Mayan Volcano delivered its own devastation. In February 1814, the mountain's perfect cone vanished behind a curtain of ash. Lava and burning rocks rained down on the town of Kagsawa. The church, once the heart of the community, became a tomb for those who sought shelter inside. Over 1,200 lives were lost that day, the ground itself swallowing the memories of generations. In living memory, Pinatubo stands as a warning. June 1991 began with tremors and rising plumes. By mid-month, the mountain erupted with a force that stunned the world. Entire villages disappeared beneath volcanic mudflows. Ash clouds darkened skies as far as Vietnam, and global temperatures dropped by half a degree. 847 people died, some caught by collapsing roofs, others swept away by rivers of mud that flowed for weeks. The eruption left a scar across Luzon, visible from space and etched into the lives of those who survived. Each of these eruptions rewrote the landscape and the fate of the people who called it home. The numbers, 1,300 at Tal, 1,200 at Mayan, 847 at Pinatubo, are not distant statistics, but reminders of what can happen when the earth beneath the Philippines awakens. March 3, 2025. A magnitude 6.1 earthquake strikes off Mindoro, rattling buildings from Batangas to Manila. Within hours, scientists at PHYVOLCS are scanning regional seismic feeds. At first, the quake appears routine, a familiar jolt along the Philippine Fault, no major damage, no tsunami threat. But as the day unfolds, something strange begins to happen. Instruments at Taeyal register a sudden spike in tremors. Mayon's ground sensors pick up subtle, rapid inflation. Canlan's seismic drums pulse with a new rhythm. By the end of the second day, all five major volcanoes show signs of agitation. Anomalous earthquakes, shifting gas emissions, rising temperatures. The pattern? 
is impossible to ignore. P-H-I-V-O-L-C-S. Staff gather in the monitoring center, comparing live feeds, debating the meaning of this cascade. No one can explain why a quake in Mindoro would coincide with simultaneous unrest across systems hundreds of kilometers apart. Official logs label the event as an external trigger, causal link uncertain. For the first time, the possibility of a hidden connection, something linking these volcanoes deep underground, moves from theory to urgent question. The timeline is clear. One shock, then a chain reaction no one has seen before. Tael Seismic Network logged 1,247 earthquakes in July 2025, more than triple the average for the same month in previous years. Sulfur dioxide emissions at the crater spiked to 4,200 tons per day, four times the baseline, while the lake's temperature climbed above 33 degrees Celsius. Water samples showed a drop in pH to 2.8, acidifying the lake and killing fish along the shore. At Mayan, Ground sensors recorded the volcano swelling by 2.3 millimeters each day. The summit's temperature jumped by 47 degrees, melting ice caps and sending steam plumes high above the crater. Canlon erupted on June 18th, shooting ash three kilometers into the sky. In just three days, the mountain shook with 892 earthquakes, more than it had seen in months. Bulusan's activity followed a different pattern. A sudden phratic blast on April 29th lasted 77 minutes, with steam emissions surging by 340% and tremors pulsing every six to eight hours. Pinatubo, quiet for decades, registered 67 deep earthquakes in March, with carbon dioxide output doubling by early summer. Each volcano on its own can threaten thousands. Now every system shows signs of unrest, at the same time across hundreds of kilometers. Deep beneath the Philippine archipelago, scientists are racing to understand what could be connecting these restless volcanoes. In 2024, a team from Tokyo University used seismic tomography, a technique that reads earthquake waves as they travel through the Earth, to peer into the crust below Luzon and the Visayas. Their imaging revealed anomalies at depths of 35 to 40 kilometers, zones where seismic waves slowed, hinting at the presence of molten rock. These zones stretch laterally for more than 200 kilometers, far deeper and broader than the magma chambers once thought to sit in isolation beneath each volcano. At the same time, a separate investigation by the University of the Philippines set out to analyze volcanic gases vented from Taal, Mayan, and Bulusan. The results, published in May 2025, surprised even veteran researchers. The chemical makeup of these gases, especially their helium isotope ratios and trace elements, match closely across all three volcanoes. For decades, the assumption was that each system drew from its own distinct magma supply. Now the evidence points to a shared source, or at least a set of deep interconnected pathways feeding the surface vents. Dr. Maria Antonia Bornas, Chief Science Research Specialist at Pivoalx, describes the findings with a mixture of excitement and caution. We're seeing magmatic signatures we cannot fully explain. The synchronization suggests deep crustal connections we didn't know existed. Dr. Renato Salidum, the agency's director, puts it more bluntly, our models predicted isolated events. This coordinated behavior indicates our understanding was incomplete. We are learning in real time. To make sense of the complexity, researchers often compare the crust beneath the Philippines to a tangled network of old pipes. Pressure released at one point can travel unseen through hidden corridors and cracks only to surface kilometers away. The Philippine Sea Plate, subducting at nearly eight centimeters per year, creates fresh weaknesses and new melt every day. Yet most monitoring equipment only sees the uppermost layers, leaving the deepest connections as educated guesses supported by indirect signals and chemical fingerprints. For the first time, the possibility that these volcanoes are not isolated, but part of a sprawling dynamic system is being taken seriously by the country's top scientists. In 2018, a Nak Krakatau in Indonesia collapsed in a violent eruption, triggering a tsunami and setting off tremors in nearby volcanic systems. That event forced scientists to reconsider how pressure and stress might ripple through the earth, connecting what once seemed like isolated volcanoes. In the Philippines, the question now is whether a similar domino effect could be unfolding across Tal, Mayon, Canlaon, Bulusan, and Pinatubo. The theory is both simple and unsettling. When one volcano releases pressure, 
that force doesn't just vanish. Instead, it may travel through hidden corridors deep underground, shifting the balance in neighboring systems. Some researchers point to 1991 when Teal's unrest preceded Pinatubo's historic eruption by months, despite the two being separated by 150 kilometers. The pattern isn't proof, but it's enough to raise alarms among volcanologists watching the current crisis. Yet, confirmation remains out of reach. The Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology relies on a network of more than 350 seismic stations, but most are tuned to the upper 15 kilometers of the crust. The suspected connections, if they exist, run far deeper, possibly as much as 40 kilometers down. At those depths, the signals become faint, scattered, sometimes lost entirely in the background noise of the Earth. International teams have warned that these blind spots leave critical questions unanswered. Are the volcanoes truly sharing pressure, or is the simultaneous unrest just a coincidence born from the restless tectonic setting? Without real-time data from the deep crust, scientists can only watch for surface clues. Gas emissions, ground swelling, sudden spikes in tremor. The lack of certainty forces constant vigilance. Any shift at one volcano could, in theory, set off changes in another, but the limits of current monitoring technology mean that the true mechanics remain hidden. For now, the scientific community is left in a state of watchfulness, alert to every tremor, every plume, every unexplained signal, knowing that the answers may be buried far below where their instruments can reach. Three kilometers from Tyal's crater, Romeo de la Cruz parks his battered jeepney outside a concrete house with fresh cracks running across the walls. Since the 2020 eruption, repairs have cost his family over 340,000 pesos, enough to buy land in safer towns if only the price wasn't seven times higher outside the danger zone. The de la Cruzes earn between 8,000 and 15,000 pesos each month barely enough for food, school fees, and the constant patchwork needed to keep their home standing. When new fissures split their kitchen floor in April 2025, Romeo scraped together another 45,000 pesos for repairs, borrowing from relatives and pawning his wife's jewelry. Where do we go? He asks. This is our livelihood, our community. We watch the volcano every day and pray. His wife, Maricel, knows the numbers by heart. Land here costs 2,000 pesos per square meter. Anywhere safer, it's at least 15,000. We cannot afford to be safe, she says. For families like hers, the choice is impossible. Stay and risk everything, or leave and face poverty in a place they do not know. Along the lakeshore, Rodrigo Santos mends nets in a boat his father built. Fishing has fed his family for generations, but since the last eruption, his catch has dropped by 70%. My father fished here, my grandfather fished here, we are part of this place, Rodrigo says. He stays not because it's safe, but because there is nowhere else to go. Like thousands around Te All, the De La Cruz and Santos families live with the volcano's threat. Not by choice, but because escape is a luxury they cannot afford. Inside the Fivio LCS headquarters, the reality of monitoring 24 active volcanoes comes down to numbers on a spreadsheet. The agency's annual budget, 890 million pesos, or about $15.7 million, must cover not only seismic networks, but also staff salaries, public warnings, and tsunami alerts. That breaks down to just 37 million pesos, or roughly $654,000 per volcano each year. By comparison, the United States spends more than twice that amount to monitor a single high-risk system. This financial squeeze has real consequences on the ground. At Canlown, nearly 40% of seismic and geodetic stations were offline during the height of unrest in mid-2025. Some sensors failed from age, others from storm damage or theft. Maintenance logs from May and June show delays stretching for months as technicians wait for replacement parts or new procurement approvals. The story is similar at Teal. Of the eight underwater sensors once anchored to the lake bed, only three remain operational. The rest have been knocked out by battery failures, volcanic debris, or cable vandalism. These buoys are the first line of defense, tracking sulfur dioxide, heat, and tremors beneath the surface, yet more than half have gone silent. Five OLCS officials admit the gaps leave dangerous blind spots. Surface monitoring continues, 
but the deepest signals, the ones that might hint at a major eruption, often go undetected. Our alert system can only be as effective as the weakest sensor in our network, one senior official testified before the Senate in July. Each outage means another piece of the puzzle is missing, another warning that might arrive too late. The agency's mission is risk management, not prevention, and every peso must be stretched to cover a country built on restless ground. Weekly earthquake counts now run three to four times above what used to be considered normal. In 2023, a typical week might bring a few dozen tremors near Taal or Conleon. By mid-2025, some stations log hundreds, sometimes more, every seven days. Scientists who once spoke of background noise now find that the background itself has changed. The threshold for concern keeps rising, but so do the numbers. Disaster models, once designed for single eruptions, now strain to account for overlapping events. Simulations by the National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council show that if even two of the five major volcanoes erupt together, the evacuation need could reach 3 million people. That figure dwarfs the 376,000 displaced by Tall in 2020. The projected economic loss stands at 450 billion pesos, about 8 billion US dollars, enough to cripple local economies and send shockwaves through the national budget. The new normal is neither stable nor safe. Families who have rebuilt time and again now face the prospect of losing everything in a single week. Scientists warn that the system is running hotter, more volatile, and less predictable than ever before. Each week without a major eruption brings only temporary relief. The question is no longer how much risk can be managed, but how much can be endured. As the baseline shifts, so do the limits of what the country can prepare for. No one can say when the next eruption will come or how many will follow. By July 2025, seismic and gas activity across five Philippine volcanoes surged to three times historic norms, a pattern never before seen in PH 5 OLCS records. Past disasters like Teol in 1911 and Pinatubo in 1991 claimed thousands of lives, but never with multiple systems acting at once. Newly released research links deep magma pathways and shared gas signatures, challenging the belief that each volcano acts alone. Yet, critical questions remain. Are these truly connected? And what triggered this simultaneous unrest? PHIVOLCS openly admits monitoring gaps. 40% of crucial stations remain offline, and only partial lake sensors operate at Teal. Today, over 2 million Filipinos live within active danger zones, facing rising tremors and constant uncertainty. The science is incomplete, but the risk is clear. For families and officials, preparation is a daily reality. The evidence shows one certainty. The Philippines now faces a volcanic threat unlike any in its recorded history. 